Later today, Marionette Miller Meeks will be seated provisionally as the representative for Iowa's 2nd Congressional District. But the battle between Meeks and her opponent, Rita Hart, presses on. Earlier this month, Hart filed a petition to Congress challenging the election results. She claims 22 legally cast ballots had not been counted. If the House takes up the petition, it could conduct a recount of the district and determine whether the results should be reversed. A spokesman for Democrat House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tells us every vote counts and that the Committee on House and Administration is conducting a thorough and fair review of this election. So since the Iowa Secretary of State certified Miller Meeks the winner of House District 2, she will take the seat for now. Miller Meeks won the race by just six votes after a district-wide recount. That's why Hart is taking things to Congress. In a statement, Hart wrote, Hart wrote, Iowans deserve to know that they will be represented by the candidate who received the most votes in this race. A review of those uncounted ballots in this election proves that I am the candidate. We asked KCCI political analyst Dennis Goldford about Miller Meeks taking her place in Congress. He says it's important that Iowans get represented while there is uncertainty in the results. The more immediate sense, uh, the significance of this is not one way or another toward how the House will judge the, uh, the petition, the, uh, uh, the complaint on the part of Rita Hart. Uh, what's significant is the people of the second district will have representation uh, no matter who's ultimately seated by the House. We also asked Dennis about what this means for the Hart campaign. He says this dispute is far from over is not something uh, that we should get too excited about one way or the other at this point. Again, the fact that Miller Meeks uh, results were certified as winning by the appropriate bodies here in Iowa um, sort of gives her an advantage, if you will. But at the same time, the House is the ultimate judge of the credentials and qualifications of its members. And in the case of a dispute, the House will make a decision. Despite the outcome of that investigation still being unclear, Miller Meeks seems to be confident that the seat is hers. Last week, she submitted her resignation from the Iowa Senate, where she represented District 41 in southeast Iowa. That means there will be a special election for voters in Senate District 41. The governor's office says that will happen on Tuesday, January 26th. Candidates need to file by January 12th. And one thing is certain for people in the 2nd District, Congressman Dave Loebsack will no longer represent them after today. The Iowa City Democrat has held the office since 2007. He initially wanted to serve for only 12 years, but decided to seek re-election after President Trump's election in 2016. KCCI's Chris Gothner spoke to Loebsack about his future. What are you looking forward to here in retirement? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, I don't really have any uh, plans in the short term, that's for sure at this point. Uh, basically, I'm going to try to prevent myself from getting, you know, the COVID, obviously, and uh, and my wife, Terry, as well. Uh, you know, we're, we're pretty much, you know, hived up the way a lot of people are, and I have been since the pandemic began. Uh, that's been one of the frustrating things as a member of Congress. You know, I'm traditionally, as you know, getting out all the time, going to businesses, going to schools, going to visit people and all the rest. And it's been very difficult to do that, you know, since March. Um, and going forward, uh, you know, hopefully uh, some of the restrictions will get lifted sooner rather than later as the vaccine gets distributed. We'll see how that turns out. Um, maybe I'll go back into teaching. Maybe I'll do some other things. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to do what I can to volunteer, um, especially uh, at food banks and that sort of thing. I have to be a little bit careful given my age. I just turned 68. Uh, so, you know, I'm in in that, that category that's going to hire risk. But um, uh, I've still got a lot uh, of time to give back as much as I possibly can to the community. I'm looking forward to doing that. How do we move past this, this level of rancor in our political system? I have a lot of friends across the aisle. Uh, I made an attempt to cultivate you know, those relationships. And I've been able to work with a lot of those folks on broadband issues, for example, and other things as well. And um, you know, I'm going to miss that part of it, is getting things done and getting them done in a bipartisan kind of way. Um, and uh, look, I'm, I'm also convinced that if Rita Hart were to be successful and were to be put in, in my position, I think she could do that and even more. That's a big reason why I support her in the first place. So I hope that uh, however the race turns out in my district, um, that the, the person who ultimately wins that seat and is there uh, can, can uh, you know, work on a bipartisan basis and try to get things done 
it's cultivating those relationships on a personal level as much as anything. Uh, and then, and then hopefully that can, uh, you know, evolve into something uh, more professional and policy wise. And, and I've tried to do that the time that I've been there and I think I've been successful for, for the most part. Well, you brought up the second congressional district race. Now it's being uh, watched nationwide. What's your take on this kind of uh, unorthodox situation going on right now? Well, you're right. I think unorthodox is a good word for it. There's no question. There have been these kinds of, of, uh, of uh, challenges in the past. There have been a lot of them, uh, but not a lot of them recently. And I think Rita's got a very good case. I really do. She has um, uh, found 22 voters uh, who uh, she believes, and I believe, voted legally, and their votes should be counted. And, you know, if those votes are counted, some will go to Rita, some will go to, to, to uh, Miller Meeks. Uh, Rita, I think, will come out ahead. But, you know, she's not just asking for those 22 votes to be counted. She's asking for all the so-called overvotes and undervotes to be counted as well. She wants to open up this whole thing so that we can actually figure out how this ended up uh, and uh, and go go beyond sort of what it, what what where it's gone up to this point. And she has done that with the full knowledge that she might lose as a result of opening this thing up uh, uh, to a greater extent and more scrutiny of the votes and counting all the votes. That's the bottom line. So I do support her on this. Um, it's going to be tough. There's no question about that. It goes before the House Administration Committee. Uh, the committee itself may not even decide to proceed uh, in favor of Rita uh, to some kind of a full house vote, uh, however they determine that to take place. She understands that, and I understand that certainly too. And when that is all finished and Miller meets, if she's the winner, then she's the winner. Uh, and I know she's been certified by the state. She's been, she's been, she will be seated uh, provisionally, provisionally being, you know, the operative word here. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. It could take quite a long time for this to play out. As you might imagine, I'm going to be following it very closely. But this is about making sure that all about all the votes count, and you know there are at least 22 that we know that were not counted, uh, and then looking at these other votes as well out there.